For the latest top tips, reviews and advice, please subscribe below. Hello and welcome to At Walls Camping and Leisure with me, Mike. Today I'm giving you a bit more of a tutorial video on how to pitch an inflatable awning. Um, so it's a question we get um, asked quite a bit, so I thought we'd do sort of a bit more of a, a walkthrough video on the best ways and tips to actually put up your inflatable awning. So I've got myself a lovely, big, nice twin axle caravan behind me here and we're just going to sort of go through step by step on to put up an inflatable awning. I've chosen the um, Vango Kalari 420 for this particular pitching video. Um, the same method I'm using, you can use on sun camp models, the camper models, any sort of inflatable awning should be fine. So um, what we're firstly going to do obviously is get her out of the bag, spread her out and then look about attaching it on. So to be honest, this awesome method you would more than happily use for any pole models that you've got. Um, there's no reason why you couldn't do, obviously it's just the fact the last bit, when it's sort of pumping up, becomes a lot simpler and quicker than it would be with a pole model. So let's uh, untie it, pop that away, unravel her. she goes. So on this particular model, which is like I said, the Vanga Kalari, it's uh, multiple point inflation. So you've got these extra beams here to go up inside of it internally, just to give yourself more sort of bracing and support. So now we're at this point here, we'll just unravel her. Perfect. So we'll thread it through. A little tip when you're threading it through is try and keep as much as the material underneath the rail so it makes it easier to slide it through. Obviously, if you've got um, two people to give you a hand, it does make this feat a lot easier and a lot simpler. But it can be done on your own like I'm about to now anyway. So, okay. Let's feed her in. Obviously, it's making sure that you don't get any material caught in there and it's nice, nice and smooth. As she goes up, up she goes. Having that second person to give you a hand certainly makes it easier to pull across when you need to rather than sort of one person feeding and guiding as you go, and the other person can just pull across. So that looks like it's gone on fine, perfect. At this point now, it's a great idea to have a look on where you want to position the caravan awning. Basically because you want to be aware of you're not crossing over any windows ideally, because that way it's going to create more draft down the side. So we'll, what we'll do is we'll bring her a little bit this way just to stop that window there. Now before we do any inflating, regardless of the model it is, like I said, you want to peg the back down close to the caravan. That way it stops it sort of protruding out, like I said, getting that sort of draft down the outside. So, so what we'll do is get our trusty uh, mallets and some pegs. And you want to basically create a straight line from the top down to where you need to go. And with this pegging point, I actually probably, in fairness, I put it slightly underneath the vehicle just to make sure it sits nice and tight and like so it doesn't come out too far. When you're putting the pegs in, ideally you want, you want is a sort of 45 degree angle because that's going to give it sort of the best strength that will stop it, even when it's being forced, not coming back up. So, same with this one. Dead straight underneath her. And we'll go a little bit under the caravan. Find your point, 45 degree angle. And we'll mallet her in. Perfect. So now she's securely against the caravan. It's just a case of grabbing your pump and pumping her up. Obviously, if you've got a pole model, this is when the time when you spend faffing with your poles, not quite the quick and simpleness of air. So this model, unlike the camper models, it's multiple inflation. So 
you do each beam individually. So I'm going to start with the middle two, do the, then do the two ends really. So with the camp models, obviously you just you've got one inflation point which you just go off from. I mean, the joys of probably something like this system where you've got multiple inflation points is is it's much simpler to sort of segregate everything off. So if you do have any issues, punch or something like that, it's all done there for you. Can't forget around that really by having sort of isolation valves on the inside. So what you want to do is sort of pump the beams to full pressure. So for the Banger model, it's uh, 7 psi. And as I'm pumping, I can quite clearly see in this little dial beneath me what the pressure is. So, and we're going to get 7 psi there. Perfect. There's actually no, um, not really longer to do the beams individually like with the Vanga system. In fairness, it probably gives you a little bit of a break. Pump's all swiveled, just turn that round. Now there are uh, different pumps you can buy on the market, whether you want something like this, what I've got is what Vanga supply with it, similar to what Camper give you. There are some electric pumps, so 12 volt ones you can sort of plug into your cigarette lighter. Pretty much just set the pressure and let it do the work. Initially it's probably a little bit slower, but the joy of it is you're not actually doing the manual labour part of it. Perfect. So now we've got the two side ones. In you go, and up you go. And merely with sort of probably more inflation, you can have an extra pump, and then you get another people person on it, so you can make it a two-man or two-person workout, I should say. That's that one done. And last, but by no means least, the left hand one. Up she comes. Well. And so regardless of which sort of model you were looking at or you have got, we do um, pitching videos sort of a one point fully uh, shot really. Like I said, just shows you sort of the best way you can put up your uh, your driveway, well, you put up your awning. So, now I've done the four main beams, we're just going to sort of put it out and put it up in that sense just to give it a bit of shape. So, this part where it's not a bad idea to have someone go inside and just help it up, being just me, I'm going to just pull her up in position. Up you come. Up you come. Out you go. So, the next two points we're going to peg first are this side and the far side. Reason being is you want to make sure you get a nice flat shape. So, we have other models which also have a flat front and like this sort of panoramic front. You want to make sure you've got lovely straight lines. So straight lines out from the caravan on the side. And I'll see a nice straight line across or if this one is actually curved. So we'll do these first two points. Now not only are you wanting to um, peg out from the caravan, so potentially out from here, but you want to pull against that side. There is a strap that runs in between this one here just to make sure you get out nice and firm. So pull it out that side, pull it out against there. And you're getting about a 45 degree angle for the peg just so it can hold nice and firm. So you're going to want a nice straight line on this side here and pulling against the opposite side again. So. It's a good idea when you're packing up is to make sure all your sort of uh, tension straps are sort of fully out. That way when you come to peg it, you've got fully adjustment. 
So with these ones, we don't want to pull it out too far, just to where it's sort of comfortable. Main reason is you don't want to make sure that roof's too flat, so otherwise you collect water. So it's just, like I said, where it's comfortable, that's fine. So now the main body's up, it'll pretty much free stand. What we're going to do now is just go around and do sort of the uh, storm straps or guide ropes. So, just yet again, to give it sort of strength. I mean, it will obviously stand up as it is uh, for the wind for the time being, so you do get a bit of a blast. You should have no problems of it staying rigid. I mean, for me, storm straps uh, are pretty much a must with uh, any awning. Put it under tension. Just because it gives you, obviously, not only torsion across, so it'll make that come out really nice. So. And then finally, on the other side. So, so you can take your time with this, it doesn't take too long. I mean, it'd be a lot quicker if I wasn't sort of uh, explaining what I'm doing as I'm going along. Perfect. So now we're in a situation where what we'll do is we'll peg the base out. But what I'll probably do beforehand is put storm straps in there, like I said, just to give it a bit more bracing across the top. So, uh, let's pop them on down here. So this particular model, you've got two places of saw straps. One is obviously giving torsion that way, but you've got a separate one here as well to go forward. Uh, majority of the time, storm straps are an optional extra, even though, to be honest, you probably would want them every single time. So that's the one, and straight away you can tell the difference in the roof. I mean, the bracer beams will give a similar effect as well, but the storm straps just give you that a bit more rigidity. Perfect. So now what we've got to do is basically peg out the base. See, and you want to continue a straight line on the side, still inserting the peg about a 45 degree angle, just yet again to give it the best strength. But I, I'm a, certainly a man of straight lines, I'd like I think to be perfectly flat and even. So, like I said, you've got some adjustment there. Perfect. But as you can see, you see, it doesn't take really an expert to get it looking absolute pucker. Brilliant. So by last, by no means least, what we'll do is we'll get the bracer beams in place just to give that extra rigidity to the awning. So let's grab and do that. So we'll get the pump. These bracer beams are pretty... Uh, easy to uh, inflate there's not really much air needed in them so a couple of a couple of pumps and they'll be uh, absolute golden so we go so on this particular model there actually are color coordinators through tabs inside so you you know exactly where they're going um, the couple models these are already inserted inside of it already so you don't really need to worry about it and they're actually sort of embedded into it so it's like i said it's one point inflation will do the whole thing. There are sort of pros and cons to that. Um, like I said, this part is already uh, sort of sectioned off already. And the camper model's got isolation valves to give the similar effect 
that are sort of embedded in there. I mean, uh, between the two models, between Vanga and Camper, quality is very similar. They both sort of riddle with their features. You find sort of both of them have uh, lots of accessories you can add to the awning, as well as giving sort of good guarantees. So, two more to go, and then we're absolutely laughing. More and more people seem to be buying inflatable awnings, mainly down to the quick and ease, but the rigidity you get with the inflatable awnings speaks for itself as well. I mean, you speak to anyone who's had an inflatable awning, I'm sure they'll uh, absolutely rave about it. We do normally have this, um, um, well, other awnings on display in our indoor showroom. So by all means, uh, pop down into us. Let's pop that one in there straight away. You can see that from the outside. Get that roof looking really nice and tall. We've got another one at the front here. Pop her in. Yeah, again, just bracing that and giving that extra support. Another one at the front there. And we've got a few for the middle part of the roof which obviously a lot of people call sort of Ravanda poles or anything along the lines of that. But that makes the job quite a nice one to be fair. Beautiful. Zip it up and you're ready to go. So pretty much all you've got to do now if you wanted to is put an extra few uh, draft skirts on here or there, or you put your rear back poles in. But in a nutshell, that's the best way to put up a uh, inflatable awning. We do have uh, the majority of these on display in our showroom, so you're more than welcome to come and see them. We're more have to talk through bits and bobs on it, but that's in essence is it.